Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Simon de Rockwaldson. I'm a physician and a postdoctoral researcher with the ISTOP MM study at the University of Iceland in, in Iceland. Uh, and I'm here to present uh, my abstract from ASH 2022, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and multiple paraproteins. So these are the results from the population-based ISTOP MM screening study. I have no disclosures. So to introduce the topic, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or MGUS, is an asymptomatic precursor of multiple myeloma and related disorders, and it's defined by the asymptomatic presence of paraproteins in the serum. The concentrations of these paraproteins and their isotypes can be predictive of progression risk for, from MGUS to active disease, but in some cases, more than one paraprotein is observed. This is quite rare in the Olstead County study, where we had 3% of those who had MGUS who had more than one paraprotein. But when we use more sensitive diagnostics, uh, um, here I am talking about mass spectrometry, the rate goes way up to 21% in a recent study. The isotype patterns that we see in these multiple paraproteins, their clinical implications and the underlying biology of MGUS with multiple paraproteins is quite poorly understood. So the aim of this study is to investigate the demographics, isotype patterns and clinical outcomes um, of, uh, in, a, in a population with MGUS and multiple paraproteins. This study is based on the ISTOP MM study. Uh, the ISTOP MEM study is a population based screening study for MGUS and a randomized trial of follow up strategies. And on the right side, you can see the design of the study. We have now screened just over 75,000 Icelanders, just above uh, half of the total population over the age of 40, using serum protein electrophoresis or SPEP and FLC assay. Uh, here in this study, we include those who have more than one pair of protein on the screening test. And we exclude those who have myeloma or, or related a disease or uh, very high paraprotein values or FLC ratios, since they have, by definition, more advanced disease. Um, we uh, map, the, map the isotype patterns and the baseline characteristics of these individuals based on all of those who had MGUS and were randomized to the three study arms. Um, and then we... Um, specifically looked at those who were in clinical follow-up in the study, ARMS 2 and 3, with regards to outcomes and repeat serum protein electrophoresis and M-protein measurements. And here are the results. So we found 314 individuals who had more than one paraprotein, putting the rate uh, at about 9%, as you can see. Those who were older uh, and men were more likely to have more than one paraprotein. And as you can see from the distribution of the isotypes here, you can see that IgG is less common, while IgM is more common than in those who have only one paraprotein, while IgA stays the same for both groups. Here are the isotype patterns that we identified, and the most common isotype pattern was having uh, IgG and IgM, and then IgG only, and then IgM only, and then... Uh, uh, combinations including IgA were less common. As you can see at the bottom of the table, 75% or the bottom uh, right of the table, 75% of those who have multiple paraproteins have just two, while 20% have three and 5% have more. We identified IgM isotype as a risk factor or as a predictor having more paraproteins. During follow-up, uh, we had follow-up uh, and protein measurements for uh, about 60% of, of these individuals. And interestingly, 59% only had a single paraprotein during follow-up. So 42% of paraproteins were never detected again. And as you can see, this was least common in IgG, but most common in kappa and lambda restricted bands without a corresponding heavy chain. And here are the outcomes or the clinical outcomes of those who have uh, multiple paraproteins compared to those who have a single paraprotein. Um, there was, there's no statistically significant difference between the two groups with regards to clinical outcomes, but an interesting finding is that there are zero cases of multiple myeloma in the group with multiple paraproteins. And this is not statistically significant, but still a very interesting finding that we will look into moving forward. And this is after a medium follow-up of four years. 
We also did a flow cytometry substudy where we include all those who have smoldering multiple myeloma and a conveniency sample of those who have MGUS in the ISTOP and MEM study of those who are in uh, clinical follow-up. Bone marrow samples at baseline were included as part of this study, and uh, next-generation flow cytometry was performed using a Euroflow multiple myeloma MRD 2-2 panel, as seen here on the right side, and we reviewed all available flow cytometry analyses for those who had multiple paraproteins. And here are the results. So we, we reviewed 19 individuals who had multiple paraproteins, 10 who had small during multiple myeloma, and nine who had MGUS. And in three cases, we could actually see uh, two phenotypically distinct, but still abnormal and clonal plasma cell populations, indicating that they are underlying these multiple paraproteins. So the, the main findings of the study are that 9.4% of those who have MGUS have multiple paraproteins, but a majority of those only had a single paraprotein during follow-up, so dropped at, uh, the others uh, one or, or more, and had only a single paraprotein during follow-up. IgM paraproteins are more common in those who have multiple paraproteins, and they were associated with having a higher number of paraproteins. An interesting finding of the study is that we find no cases of multiple myeloma in those who have multiple paraproteins, but we do find uh, Waldenstrom's microglobulinemia and other lymphoproliferative diseases that are more associated with IgM paraproteins. So this, these findings indicate that it's important to keep these disorders in mind when people have at least one IgM paraprotein, regardless of the others. An interesting finding also that we identified cases where two distinct phenotypically abnormal and monoclonal plasma cell populations could be identified and seem to underlie uh, MGUS with multiple paraproteins. So it's important to look at these individuals now because they, they, we will see more of them in the future with higher sensitivity diagnostics, both with improvements in serum protein electrophoresis, but more importantly, uh, with the advent of mass spectrometry diagnostics. In this study, we need more follow-up to say definitively what the clinical implications of multiple paraproteins are. But I think that this explorative study of individuals with MGUS and multiple paraproteins is, is a good start to start looking at this population, which uh, will become more clinically important moving forward. Thank you for your attention. These are uh, uh, my collaborators at the ISTOP MEM team and the protector of uh, the study, Vetis Fimbo the first female president of Iceland. Thank you so much.